I was going to start a new sermon series, but you never start a sermon series on the July 4th weekend is always the smallest attendance in churches all across America. It's just the way it is. I called up the Bay Bridge. There was a backup all the way to uh, Ritchie Highway yesterday. For those going to the beach, I'm sure they spent many hours waiting to get down there. But uh, so there's a lot of people away. And again, keep our youth in prayer for these. I think they're going for four days, so keep them in prayer also. So, um, but we're going to, we're going to, before I get started on a new sermon series, um, as I prayed, this is what God laid on my heart for us to do today. Turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 3. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, we're going to, I'm not doing a verse by verse study today, so don't get excited. I know there's 30 verses, and it would take about three or four hours to do that. Uh, we are going to just, I'm, I'm just going to give a, like an overview, um, but I, thought, I think this is very relevant to today. Um, the culture, uh, one of the concerns I have is the culture we live in and how the church has caved in to the cultures of, the, of, the, of this world. And um, some of the things I just thought of some things, we live in a culture that has abandoned God. It's obvious. We live in a culture with no absolutes. We live in a self-centered, ungodly culture. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But we live in a time where the church, as I just said, is caving into the culture. And it's very alarming the, the way it's going. But today I want us to look at Daniel 3 and learn how to live an uncompromising faith in Jesus in an ungodly culture. It can be done. And we see a great example of that in this story. This is a story of faith triumphing over fear. This is a story of courage over cowardice, over conviction, over compromise. This is what we as believers have to stand strong. There are certain times when we got to stand strong. And we're going to learn how to stand up in a culture that is falling apart all around us. It is like so a mess. But, but we are here for such a time as this. As Esther was, we are here for such a time as this. And Daniel 3, uh, the title that I put for this is, Jesus is with you in your fiery trial. Okay, so we're going to pray, and then we're going to get into God's Word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are here today, Lord. We thank you, as, as I mentioned, the teachers, that, uh, the faithful teachers that we have here at North Glen. I'm so thankful for them, how they care so much about your Word, and they teach your Word, and, and, they, and, it's, and we're uncompromising in, 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 in sh sh just sharing your, your truth and love, Lord. That's what we, we do here, Lord. And we thank you for our gifted teachers that have answered your call and, and, and are committed to teaching your, your holy word, Lord. And Lord, today as we look into this story in Daniel, Lord, we ask you to speak to us through your word, Lord. We ask you to help us for the pressures that are on us in, in this culture, Lord. And, and help us, Lord, to, to rise above this and, and to do like uh, our, our, our story here, like Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, Lord, we pray that you just help us to, to see this example of these three young, courageous men, Lord. And Lord, that we would just live our lives in a way that's pleasing to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, before we get started in Daniel 3, I want to give us some context into Daniel. Um, Daniel 2. Daniel 2 is, so, I, I've really been studying Daniel 1, 2, and 3. I like to always, when I study, preach something, I like to find out what was going on before. Daniel 2 is just such a great picture. If you ever get a chance to study Daniel 2, Daniel 2 is a picture of uh, much prophecy. And, and, and that, that dream that, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had is, and that Daniel interpreted is, is the future. It, it's, a, it's futuristic, and it, 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 well, it talks about the different, I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole sermon in itself. But I was just, as I was studying that, Daniel 2, I was just getting excited. Like, it, it's just so much, so rich in, in prophecy and so rich in how God's word is so powerful and, and how things come to pass, as, as, as he says. But, but Daniel interpreted uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And I just want to read, listen to what the king said at the end of verse 2, uh, proceeding into chapter 3. 
Starting in verse 46 in Daniel 2, it says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and increase to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and the revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Notice what he said. Truly your God, not he didn't proclaim as his God, truly your God. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler of the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also, Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the, in the gate of the king. So, there's about an eight-year, at least an eight-year gap between chapter 2 and chapter 3, and we're going to see how King Nebuchadnezzar's heart changed. As you wrote, you've seen how he, he uh, lifted up Daniel's God, our God, and this is just uh, an example of one thing is certain. Our faith, your faith, my faith, will be tested in this ungodly culture just as it was in Babylon. You know, uh, and Daniel and his three friends, they, they, they just rise up, rose up above this. So let's, uh, I'm going to break this da Daniel down in three different sets here. First is 1 through 12. And remember, there's some tough words in here, so I'll do my best. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 60 cubits. Now, six cubits. Now, we don't usually measure by that, but just to break that down, that is 90 feet tall and 10 foot wide. Okay? That is a huge, 90 foot, huge. He set it up in the plain of. Dura in the province of Babylon, so everyone could see. You know, he wanted this was this was big. And look, listen to what the king he brought all the big shots out. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word and gathered together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. So, all the big shots are there. This is like this, this is this is what we all got to do here. So the, so the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> excuse me, has set up. Then a herald cried aloud, "To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute." The harp, the lyre, the psaltery. The psaltery is like a harp. It's like, it's like a triangle-shaped harp, just to let you know. In symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre and symphony with all kinds of music all the people nations and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which king nebuchadnezzar has set up therefore <coughs> excuse me at that certain time at, at at that time certain chaldonians came forward and accused the jews they spoke and said of king nebuchadnezzar o king live forever o king you have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn flute harp lyre and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall cast into the, most, the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. How far am I going here? To verse 12, this last one. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid do regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Okay. The people had two choices here, right? To do what? To either bow down or to burn, right? So 
This is uh, number one. I, I want to put up there on the board. Number one, living in peer pressure. When we live in peer pressure, don't give in. And I don't know if you know it or not, but there's a lot of peer pressure in this world, especially for our young people. So, so as they surrender to the peer pressure here, they all bow down. Today in America, we see many in our nation bowing down to this ungodly culture. And as I said, it's even crept into the churches. Uh, for the highest, the highest in our political uh, leaders, uh, we are paying the price of this. Uh, God's judgment. God will judge our nation based on, you know, as we know, we sh we can see in the in the Bible when when there was good kings, the people prospered. When there was evil kings, people suffered. And 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 we are in a very evil time now with our leaders. Um, so if you had the choice to bow down to the ungodly culture that we live in today that is against I'm going to use the word totally against God's word or die what do you think you would do you, what do you think you would do some would compromise wouldn't it some would compromise and say I may be bowing down you might be seeing me bow down but inside I'm standing up you know that's not what Shadrach Meshach and Abednego did, did they? When the music starts, and it's interesting how Satan was what? In, in, what was he in, in, in heaven? He was what? The worship leader, wasn't he? He led the worship there. Peer pressure mounts. And we will respond in one of two ways. If we are choosing to love and obey God's word, we will respond with what? With conviction, we will be convicted. The Holy Spirit will convict us. And we will not give in to peer pressure. Conviction has been a lost word in the Christian walk. Because conviction, we, we cannot, we have to, we, we don't do the popular thing. We do what the God's word says. But if what man says becomes more important to us than what God says, and we are and we allow ourselves to be controlled by this world, we will respond with what? Compromise. We will compromise. We will compromise our faith and give in to the peer pressure. Peer pressure in our scripture today compelled everyone to bow down. They had all these big hot shots there. This is a big thing, and, and they expected everybody to bow down. And we have to learn the important lesson we have here in this scripture on how to live with the pressure of with the peer pressure that we're going to we're going to all have we're going to have this because in the moment it is so easy to to give in isn't it in the moment to the crowd being in the moral minority can be very difficult and that's where we live in the moral minority as believers in Jesus Christ they don't want to hear about absolutes if you put Jesus on a, I'll just say on these talk, one of these talk shows, you put Jesus on a talk show and you interview him, they would consider him a bigot, a racist, all kind of things. They would call him every name in the book because he's standing on the truth. And Jesus would tell them, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to me except, ex no one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to heaven apart from Jesus Christ. Now, what do you think the world would do when somebody stands up and says that? What a narrow-minded, bigot, you know, all kinds of names. Jesus would be called all these things in this world's culture, wouldn't he? Because he has absolute truth, and we don't, we, we have to respect others' opinions, and, 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 and that's what the world says, that we have to, we have to, and, and that's not what God says. So I ask you a question. Is there an idol in your life that our culture says is right, but God says no? You know, you got to be careful with that. Many of us bow down to the, I'm going to call them the three P's. Possession, the three idols. Possessions, people, and pleasure. We, we choose possessions, people, and pleasure over God's word. And we are not going to get the victory when we do that. So I ask you a question. Are you living more 
for the approval of man or of God. Galatians 1.10, am, am I a pleaser of man or am I a pleaser of God? If I'm a pleaser of man, then I am not a servant of Christ Jesus. That's what God's word says. Is what people are saying more important than what, than what God is saying, what God's word is saying? Because church, our faith will be tested in this world. How will we respond to peer pressure? Because I can tell you this, I think for some reason it's getting easier and easier for me to not worry about peer pressure. I remember a time when it was very difficult. Seems like the older I get, the less I really care about what others think about my walk with Jesus. That's because I'm more concerned with what Jesus thinks than what others think. You can ridicule me, talk behind my back, you can do whatever you want, but Jesus is my king. I live for Jesus, and that's the way it is. And I'm going to, and his truth is absolute. There is no compromise to God's word because Jesus, again, as we said up there in prayer today, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The culture's going to change all the time, but Jesus remains the same. And I'm so thankful that we serve a God that does not change. So let's move to the next step in the culture war because we are in a culture war. Look at verses 13 through 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, this really... This really messed with him, didn't it? Gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now if you are ready at the, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery. So he's giving them another chance, isn't he? What a man, Nebuchadnezzar, what a man. He's given him another chance to bow down. And you, fall, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good, with an explanation point. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? He must have forgot about Daniel uh, about eight years ago or so, didn't you? When he talked about how, how Daniel interpreted his dream where nobody else could do it but Daniel did because God revealed it to him Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king old Nebuchadnezzar we have no need to answer you in this matter if that is the case our God whom we serve is is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Okay, so this is number two. Number two here is we go from peer pressure, living in fear pressure. This is now he's going before the king. This is this has got real now. It's like it's like if you don't do this right now, you die, you burn. When we get into the fear pressure, don't give up. Okay? So, according to God's truth and biblical principles, He has a lot to say and a lot of way we should respond when it comes to fear pressure. Because this is the tactic that, that is going on today. I'm going to call them our three boys, okay? So I don't have to keep saying their names. Our three boys refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, his 90 foot by 9 foot image so the king is enraged can you can you just imagine his countenance was sound like it was like he was just furious it kind of reminds me of the political leaders in the media today they get enraged when others that don't agree with their radical ungodly agenda you see that you see the rage you see you see you see that and, and it's like how could you not bow down to what we believe so the king gives them one more chance to bow down or burn. And we're not talking about peer pressure here. This has gotten real now. This is fear pressure. This is like our lives are on the line. And none of us have probably been in this situation at this time yet. But many other, as we talk, the persecuted church, they deal with this on a daily basis. It's a life and death decision. Even for them to come to meet together 
as a church is a life or death decision. They have to realize that if they come together, gather together in the name of Jesus, that they could be killed e easily. Our current government uses fear pressure by using mobs to rule and get us to conform to their evil ways. You can see this going on. Did you ever think of the day that you would see the Supreme Court justices, that, you would, that they would allow people to do what they do to these, to threaten their, even politicians have stood up and threatened their lives pretty much. Yes, it, it's, it's unbelievable. But it's just, this is fear pressure because they did not agree with what their agenda was. They couldn't agree with what they, what, what they want. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, you, they want you to agree or you die. I mean, that's how bad it, it gets to the point. In, in some countries, it, it is that way, isn't it? There's, church, there's uh, prisons full of people that are there just because they proclaim and preach Jesus Christ. We haven't been there much yet this, as a nation yet, but it is coming. Government leaders encouraging the mob to bring fear to the justice at their homes because they didn't like the decision. When fear comes knocking on you and I's door, we respond to it as we do peer pressure in one of two ways. If we stand on the principles of God, His holy word, we will respond with courage. It takes courage to stand amongst death to say, no, I'm going to do it God's way. And we can only do that through the wisdom of God's word, to know God's word. You have to know God's word. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they allowed their names to change. They even learned their culture. But they, when, when it went against the word of God, that's when it was, t they, that's the line drawn. Okay? If we give in to the pressure from the world's way of thinking, we will respond with cowardice. We will be cowards. And, 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 and how did our three boys here respond? They respond with what? With courage. They were, they were courageous. They respond in unbelievable courage based on the Holy Scriptures. And look at the scripture they were, they were standing on. Exodus 23 through 5. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation to those who hate me. Okay, this is what they stood on. They said, you, God's word says, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. God was, God will test us too. God, in a sense, God was testing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at Deuteronomy 8.2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to know what was in your heart. So when we're faced with this kind of uh, fear pressure, we really see what's in our heart, don't we? To know what, what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or not. See, sometimes we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna lose friends. We're going to lose our jobs. We're gonna, there's going to be a lot of things we're going to lose if we stand on the principles of God. But they drew the line. The line was drawn when they crossed over against the word of God. And God will test us, Satan will tempt us to see if we choose our fleshly desires over, this, over the Holy Spirit convictions of, against God's holy word. And God will test us in these last days, isn't he? To see if we cave in to the evil mob that looks for opportunities to spread their fear of lawlessness. We see it be beginning in our nation today. But we are called to obey the law of our authorities. Didn't, didn't Paul say it? Uh, law of authorities? Until they cross the line and violate God's holy word. That's where we draw the line. We, we, we want to follow the law of the, of the land until it contradicts God's word. 
our culture is getting more and more hostile to biblical values. You can see that. Would you ever think there'd be such an outrage over the fact of abortion, a fact that, uh, the, the, that now it's, uh, the, the, the courts didn't change the law. They said that it's, they're leaving it up to the states to vote. It's up to the people to vote whether the, about abortion. But fear is what causes most of us to feel uh, the real pressure to compromise and to conform. You know, I, I think back it, you know, people, I, I, again, I know the COVID shot was not 666, but it was a picture. Like I said, I've said this before, it was a picture. People either had to bow down to the shot or lose your jobs. Look how many people lost their jobs because they were convicted not to take the shot. I'm not anti-shot. I'm not here to argue that. What I'm here to say is that this is just a snapshot of what's coming, church. This is a, a, a vaccination. You know, the, the government, what they do is they, 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 I think they test their powers that they have on the people. And if you, you know, again, I might get a shot one day. I don't know it, but if I get led by, I'm not, but I'm saying, I'm not, I don't want us to get in the argument of the shot, pro shot. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that there's going to be coming something real soon that you're going to have to make a decision decision that either you might lose your job, you might lose your home, you might lose everything if you don't bow down to the Antichrist. Because the Antichrist is going to, you, you either going to, this is coming, that you're going to have to bow down or you're going to lose it all. The mark of the beast, you can't buy, you can't sell. In other words, you starve, you go hungry, and you go jobless, you go, you can't provide for your family. This is what's coming, church. In God's word, I'm just telling you what God's word says. But if we give in to fear pressure from the world's way of thinking, we will respond with cowardice. We will not, you know, this is the world is so temporary. We have to be stand on our convictions and, and live uh, for for what God says we are going to do it. Amen. So I I, I can't say enough that uh, I just see our culture. This really is where I think it hits home, is with our young people. Our young people, just like they're going up with the youth. You know, I, I hear these stories. I hear that our youth, now our youth, they are the peer pressure that they go through uh, to be bisexual, to, to, to not just, they want, you're not in with the crowd if you're not, if you're not willing to, to, to have no limit to what, to the this is something I never had to deal with as a, as a child or even raising my kids. But now, it, it, because of the gender, the choices of this, because of our evil, um, our, our evil culture now, you know, they've even got to the point where, I mean, I just lit, watched a, a, a woman on TV said that she was a bird. I'm a bird. I'm looking at her like, you don't look like a bird. But this is where it's getting to, the culture thing. It's almost like it, it, it's, it's Romans 1. I preached that a year ago. God gives us over to a debased mind. It, it's total insanity going on. And, and you, you think you heard it all? I'm sitting here watching this woman interviewed, and she was serious as a heart attack that I am a bird. She believes she's a bird. You know, and, and this is what, what how, do you, how, can you imagine what's going through our young people? The pressure that they're going through, the, the, they, they have to deal. Because remember when I remember when I was young, peer pressure was huge then. I wanted to be, I, I didn't want to be an outcast. I wanted, to, you know, when you're younger, you're not, you're not got all your faculties. You don't have a lot of wisdom, you know, you, 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 and it's really hard on them. So, and I look at, uh, Sharon had me get on the phone with someone and, uh, and, and I'm listening and I'm like, I'm just listening to what they go. I mean, a youth leader today goes through so much. Uh, just the different things that are going on in young people. It's it, it's it's our culture has gotten so uh, again no absolute. It's like come on, man. I mean, I mean, just pray, pray for our young people. Look at Daniel three eighteen. I love this. Listen how these three boys, these men respond 
But if not, let me just back up to 17. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able. Is our God able? Amen. Is there anything that God can't do? No. There is nothing that our God can't do. If our God is, we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. I love this. Verse 18. But if not, let it be known to you, O king. Even if we do burn, even if we burn, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Okay? They believe that God is sovereign. I, I think, I tell you this a lot, but I, I believe in the sovereignty of God. Whenever I'm in a circumstance or situation that I totally don't understand, I can't figure it out, I look to God and say, but you're sovereign. You have me in this situation, this circumstance is for a reason. You're sovereign. We put our hands in almighty God. And I, that's one of the things I love about Tim. Here's Tim, who is, uh, just went through some, some really bad operations. And his, he believes in the sovereignty of God. Joe gave her testimony today. about and What you're basically telling me is, I believe in the sovereignty of God. I know what, you, what, what the doctors say I have. But even if it don't get healed, I still have God. He's still sovereign. He's still in control. I'm not going to let it steal my joy. I'm going to live for the Lord to the last breath. This is what we do. We put our, our lives in the hands of Almighty God. Just think about that. Almighty God. How, we think about He's bigger than cancer, right? He's bigger than anything. Regardless of our circumstances. In the midst of death, they didn't ask. You know the thing they didn't ask? They didn't ask, God, deliver us from this. They did not ask for that, did they? They did not ask to be delivered them. They were seeking God's face, not his hand. How often do we seek his hand instead of his face? He wants us to seek his face and trust that whatever you decide, Lord, I'm good with. Just what Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, take this cup, this suffering away from me, but not my will, but your will be done. But these three courageous men did not even ask or pray for God to deliver them. They trusted in God no matter what you do. We're good. We ain't bound down to nothing. Our faith is not based on God's performance. See, they understood that. It's not based on his performance or what we want, but in trusting in the fact that he is our sovereign God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow down to peer pressure, and they did not bend to fear pressure either. So let's go to the last part, uh, verses 19 through 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of, full of fury, and the expression of his face changed towards Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He was hot. He wanted that. He wanted. He went down to die like instantly. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, that was hot. That was hot. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, 
walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the, the midst of the fire, and the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on which the bodies of fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not even on them. I love when people clap to the Word of God. I, that's, like, that's like the ultimate. There's no better, when, you, when your church is clapping for the Word of God, that's like, that's like man, there, there's not, nothing, not, nothing better than that. Praise the Lord. His Word is so powerful. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, and they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Here's a new decree. So Nebuchadnezzar is a believer now, right? That any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall not cut in pieces, and their houses shall not be made uh, to an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this then the king promoted Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon okay number three when we're living in God's protection don't let go don't let go don't let go of, of your faith don't let go of your relationship with Christ don't be weary don't be weary in well-doing. Hang in there. God's calling. When God call, has a calling on your life, you, you follow it through, right? You don't let the peer pressure, the fear pressure, uh, no matter what you go through, you hang in there and you, you continue being faithful to God. And that's what God, I, I hear that from God for me as a pastor. Paul, remain faithful to me. Stay the course. Don't worry about all the things going around you. Stay the course. Stay obedient. Stay in my words. Stay. I'm going to do a mighty work. I am going to see you through. Because sometimes we get deceived by what we see around us, don't we? We can, again, go into the vertical versus the horizontal. We want to stay focused on the horizontal. Take it Just like these three courageous young men did, they, they stayed focused the, even to point of death just like Jesus did he was obedient to the cross even to death we got to be that have that same tenacity these men were standing on the promise of of Isaiah 43 2 listen to this in Isaiah 43 2 don't you think that these three men knew about the scripture when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned. Did you hear what he said? When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. This is the promise that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was standing on. Deliverance from the fiery furnace is not as nearly as significant to deliverance in the fiery furnace. That's why sometimes we pray, pray the wrong prayer. We're praying for God to get me out of this. I don't want to get thee out of this. No, 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 no. He's got something to teach us. He's got something to, he wants us to depend on him. He wants us to realize that we can't do this on our own. We need Jesus. We need him. And there's some here today that are in that fiery furnace. The heat is being turned up. You know who you are being turned up in your situation your circumstances are not getting better they're getting worse it's looking hopeless it's looking like there's no hope don't let go don't let go that's why I tell people when they say I'm hanging in there I tell them don't let go you can hang in there don't let go 
Don't surrender to your fiery furnace. Don't compromise and don't run away. That's the first thing. We always want to run away. It gets hot. I'm out of here. I'm not. I, I can't handle this. I'm. That's our first. Our flesh instincts is to go, isn't it? I know it is for me. A lot of times, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm. I want to go. I want to run. Or I, we can't compromise. We can't run away from the truth. We stand on the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God. Amen. Our awesome God is able to strengthen us. No matter what we go through, the fiery furnace, we are, we are, He can strengthen us. He encourages us. Even We can even be joyful in the fiery trial. Because the joy, I always remember this, I can't, because it's so true. The joy of the Lord is our strength. What does Satan want to do? He wants to rob, steal, and destroy your joy. Then you have no strength. We need the strength. We need the joy of the Lord to be strong. You know, we can be very unhappy and still be joy joyful at the same time. We, what I'm saying is, our circumstances, we can't lie. They stink. They're no good. We don't like them. We don't like where we're at. But we can still be joyful because we know God is sovereign and He is in control of our lives. Amen? Amen. Don't abandon your first love. This is what the church of Ephesus did. They abandoned their first love. They did all these great things. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important relationship that we have. You can't compromise, sacrifice other people, other things, other pleasures for your relationship with Christ and grieve the Holy Spirit. You are hurting your walk with Jesus Christ. You're hurting the church. You're hurting, you're hurting your relationship with Christ. you got to be sold out for Jesus Christ. Nothing else is more important. Look at Daniel 3.25. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. How many people went into the fiery furnace? Three. How many were in there when King Nebuchadnezzar looked in there? Four. How many came out? Three. Well, guess what? In your fiery furnace, if you're in the fiery furnace right now, Jesus is still there. He ain't going nowhere. He's right there with us. He promised to never leave us, never for, nor forsake us, never abandon us. He, we can abandon him, but he will never abandon us because he loves us too much. So we have to realize that, 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 that God allows us to go through the fiery furnace. He allows us to do that. Look at 1 Peter 4. 12 through 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fire trials which is to try you, as though some strange things are happening to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's suffering. You know what I heard one pastor say? This, this, actually, it wasn't a pastor. A pastor heard, this is a testimony from another pastor. Someone that was being um, persecuted for the cause of Christ. He, here's what his reply was. Jesus suffered. Now it's my turn to suffer for him. Do you ever think of it like that? Sometimes, sometimes we will suffer just for the cause of Christ. There's a reason, there's a purpose behind it, isn't there? That when his glory is revealed, you also may be glad with exceeding joy. There's another scripture that I didn't give you. It's in 1 Peter. Oh, I did give it to you. 1 Peter 6. I don't even have it on my list, so I guess that's something I added. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. But the genuineness of your faith, you really get to see who you are when you go through the fire. You get to see, that's who, what, where your character, that's who you really are. Not when th times are good. We could all easily say, ah, how great Jesus is when things are good. But when, the, when we're, we're going through the, the fire, that's when we know who we really are. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes Though it is tested by fire, we are all going to be tested by fire. 
may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Love that scripture. All right, let me just finish up here with Daniel 28 through 30. Just want to read the end of this. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, and that's a capital A, we know, we know it was Jesus, and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks any amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of, of Babylon. Okay. Uh, wouldn't it be awesome to one day see our government stand up. When's the last time you've seen someone stand up for God's word? Wouldn't it be awesome to see someone stand up knowing that persecution is going to come? Knowing that, pr why don't you pray for this? Pray, pray that just like this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar, it could, happen to, it could happen to an ungodly ruler in our lifetime. I would love to see, see one of our, 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 our presidents of the United States get up with the word of God and proclaim the word of God. Say, I have my heart has changed. I am now going to follow Jesus. This is what we're going to go by. We're going to go by God's word. Wouldn't that be awesome to see that? To, uh, that would be awesome. It's time for us, though, until we can do that, though. We can take a stand for Jesus, right? So what we do that is we don't give in to this culture from peer pressure, right? We don't give in when the culture uses fear pressure. And we don't let go when we're in the fiery furnace. We don't let go because Jesus is with you. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this scripture today, this story today. Lord, help it be a, a life lesson for us today to know that you are in the fiery trials with us, Lord. Lord, no matter what we go through, we go through it with you with you as learned as we might feel lord you are there lord you will not abandon us you will not leave us we thank you lord lord strengthen us lord let us not listen to the lies of the enemy lord and not listen to the culture that we live in lord we can just like these three young men did lord they just stood up and were willing to die for you lord lord help us to have such a conviction such a faith that we're willing to die for you lord what an almighty god you are lord all we can do we can sit here every one of us can sit here and think of some of the unbelievable circumstances we've been through in our lives the summer going through them right now lord lord we can we can either we can either fall apart and, and, and succumb to the pressures or we can rise up we can turn to you the author perfecter of our faith you are not the author of confusion lord even though our our world is confused there's no doubt it's confused people think they're birds lord lord what is going on in this world that we can actually this is like our culture has changed. We would have put that person in a straitjacket years ago, but now it's like, no, this is this is good. This is good. They're, they're free. No, we're only free in you, Christ. And Jesus, as you said, your word says, we are free indeed. So, Lord, help us, Lord, as we try to navigate through this culture, Lord, through these changes that seems like it gets crazier every day of our lives, Lord. But, Lord, we know that you remain the same. So, Lord, we don't have to fear. Lord, you told us that perfect love cast out fear. Because fear has to do with torment. And the enemy wants to torment us with the fear. Because fear paralyzes. Fear causes us to, to fall apart. Lord, let us stand strong. What a great example these three young men gave us today lord let us live this out in our own lives let us also not cave into the church to the culture all these churches falling apart lord i lift up your churches lord 
I lift up your churches as I study your church, your seven churches this week. I look and I see what you want out of your church. I see what you don't want out of your church. Lord, let us be a church that is obedient to you. Lord, that we would realize that you are coming soon to take your church. We are your bride, Lord. Lord, let us be ready. Keep our lamps burning. Holy Spirit, burn in us that consuming fire that's in us, Lord. Lord, revive our souls, Lord. We need you, Jesus. No matter what it looks like, Lord, let us take our eyes off of the things around us and look to you. Lord, we need you, Lord. We cry out for you in desperation. Help us to fear the Lord, you, Lord. We want to fear you. That is the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of knowledge, Lord. Let us love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind, Lord. Let us love one another just as you love us. Let us forgive one another. Let us encourage one another. Let us pray for one another. Let us lift one another up, Lord. We need you, Lord. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.